I'm State Education Commissioner Mary Ellen Elia. I'm excited to share with you the work we're doing here in New York under No Student Goes Hungry to make sure students start the day with a healthy breakfast through Breakfast After the Bell. Expanding access to the school breakfast program is central to our focus on student success, social and emotional well-being, and supporting student mental health. School breakfast is a crucial educational support for children. Simply put, if children are hungry, they can't learn. Children should never be distracted from their studies because they're too hungry to concentrate. And our schools are working to make sure students have the fuel they need each day. Morning. Warm breakfast? These kids, it's a privilege to see them every day. Myself and the kitchen staff, we see three quarters of the school, maybe a little bit more every single day. It's our main priority to make sure that we're feeding these kids a healthy, nutritious meal and that they're eating them. It sets the tone for students because you have students coming in hungry, they can't think, they can't function. An important aspect of it, making kids happy, seeing their smiles, they're full, they're ready to go, full of energy. Good morning, come on, let's get the classes. Buenos dias. I can remember in high school, uh, we were afforded $5 a week. My father would give us $5. And I can remember standing in the line and having to think about what it was that we wanted for lunch or breakfast. And oftentimes there wasn't enough. And so this is why a program like this, it allows everyone those opportunities that perhaps they wouldn't get. And this is why it's so great to have. It's really the most important part of the day. We sit with them and talk to them and we teach them all about nutrition. They know this is a safe place and they can always get food when they need it. It's very difficult to study and to learn and to be engaged if you're hungry and your stomach is growling and you're embarrassed in the midst of the lesson. So it is important to provide that basic need so our students can blossom. We have approximately a 77% poverty rate here at Bonneville School. So what this does, this affords the opportunity of all of our students to have breakfast. No matter what their economic status, no matter their background, they all have the opportunity, they can all eat. No one's stigmatized for having breakfast, and it is a great start to their day. It's an opportunity in the morning for them to come in and socialize and eat together and have great conversation as friends and peers. Academically, it impacts my students after that. They are, have full bellies, they're ready for their morning of learning. Nobody is sitting at their seat slumping because they're tired or starving, and we're ready to start our day. Oh, look at that great smile, good morning. When we started this program, the superintendent and I had a plan and a mission that this was gonna be an all or nothing process for us. So we wanted to make sure that every child had the access to these meals, whether they were in pre-K or 12th grade. We had to figure out methods and scenarios where it would work for every student and every the school building. Caitlin Lazarski and myself really had a meeting of the minds and we very much philosophically were in, in alignment with what it would take to uh, ensure children had access and could perform their academic best. We often were surprised by how it was left out that if children were fed and had access to nutritional meals that they in fact would be able to perform their academic best. And so we knew right away that this was a critical approach and we knew it was an equity issue. Not everything works in every building. Uh, we have to accommodate for different types of buildings, if they're all on the same floor, if they have multiple levels. We also want to change it up for the different age groups, so certain things work better in certain populations. Our pre-K through five setting, we have traditional breakfast in the classroom, which entails the children coming with their little breakfast bags, bringing it to the classroom, and eating as a classroom community. They are able to fit with their friends, converse with their teachers, and have a check-in, as well as do some morning work before morning meeting. <laughs> Our middle school population will grab and go, 
So they have a breakfast cart where they will take their items and bring it right to their homeroom. They have a certain amount of time where they can eat that and then they dispose of their trash and carry on with their day. And then our high schools have vending. We have them strategically placed. Our high school is very big. There's 2,400 students in it and they are not all able to get to the cafeteria and then get to class on time in the morning. So we put the vending machines in strategic piece, parts of the building so that they can actually get a breakfast and go to their first period classes. We also offer second chance breakfast at our high schools. So they are able to go to those vending machines between uh, first and second period or anywhere up until nine o'clock in the morning. They are able to decide that they're hungry and get a breakfast. Morning. Overall, it's been such a positive program. And I can share with you that originally I was reluctant to bring it in. We envisioned students having food fights in the hallways. We envisioned trash and, and really garbage everywhere. Food being thrown. And to be honest with you, we have seen none of that. It would be hard to find someone who could argue that having access to a healthy meal isn't the right approach. The moral imperative here around ensuring kids have access is about the greater good. It's about making sure our society benefits. And if students perform better in school, they'll increase their opportunities to contribute to the overall society, and that's a positive consequence for all taxpayers. As a kid who grew up in this district, there were times when I was in school and very hungry, and I wondered about where my next meal was coming from. I experienced that embarrassment and that stigma. It's a moral imperative for me to be able to make sure other children don't have to experience what myself and, and friends had to as well. When schools take steps to improve access to the school breakfast program, by offering it after the start of the instructional day with breakfast after the bell models, the schools leverage a powerful tool to ensure that no child starts the school day hungry. When a nutritious, free breakfast is available at school, children experience numerous health and educational benefits, including reduced food insecurity, improved dietary intake, better learning, calmer classrooms, and stronger attendance and graduation rates. Breakfast in the Classroom incorporates social and emotional learning by providing social bonding time while also reducing the stigma that breakfast is only for low-income kids. Thank you for your time and for the work you do for New York students every day.